Welcome back to Winners and Losers, the show that looks at the highs and the lows from around world football this weekend. As ever, I'm joined by Patrick Van Straten. Pato, where are we starting, big man? We have to start with the little Argentinian Sergio Aguero. It was a great weekend for him. He added two goals to his tally as Man City beat Stoke 4-1. It's a really impressive performance and Aguero now has 25 goals in 25 games. Truly amazing stuff. Yeah, unbelievable. For me, the second best striker in the world behind Luis Suarez. He's now got six in three under Pep Guardiola and he looks so dynamic up front. If he can stay injury free, he's going to score a bucket load of goals. He's already overtaken Didier Drogba in terms of Premier League goals and he's taken 102 less games to do it. That shows the calibre of this player. He is an absolute sensation. I also think that backing him up this season is going to be really important at Manchester City. Get some other goal scorers though. Sure. He uh, scored loads and loads of goals last season. However, the second top Manchester City goal scorer was Kelechi Iheanacho on eight goals. So I think it's going to be vital, the likes of Nelito and that, uh, really contribute going forward in terms of goals, don't you, Pato? I think you're absolutely right. There needs to be an improvement in that supporting cast, but we're already starting to see it. Yeah. Nelito has now matched in 30 minutes of play the number of league goals that Jesus Navas has in his entire Manchester City career. And while Aguero has contributed 29 goals and assists since the start of last season, Kevin De Bruyne is coming in second with 17. That's a pretty healthy total as well. So we are seeing things start to improve. And with Aguero hitting 19, 19 goals in 2016, it looks like they're on fire up front. But who is going to be the top scorer in the Premier League? Is it going to be Sergio Aguero or is it going to be my main man Zlatan Ibrahimovic? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Our first loser is a surprising one. He comes from Spain and it's Atletico Madrid, Pato. Yes, they drew 1-1 with newly promoted side Alaves. They scored a 93rd minute penalty to go ahead, but they were pegged back with a goal from Manu Garcia in the 95th minute. Now this was actually still a pretty dominant Atleti performance. They had 27 shots to two for Alaves. That's unbelievable. Both of those were outside the box as well. It was an absolutely stonking goal for the equaliser. While Alaves produced two key passes, Atleti produced 20. Atleti also had 20 corners. And as we know, set pieces tend to be very profitable for this side. So it was a bad day at the office, but we expect them to rebound pretty soon. Yeah, they really should rebound pretty soon, especially with the likes of Antoine Griezmann still to come back into the team. Of course, he was suspended for last night's game. However, I'm a bit concerned that some of the other players need to start stepping up. If Griezmann isn't going to be there all the time, he can't be fully reliant on one man. So the likes of Kevin Gamero need to start taking his chances. Of course, he got his goal yesterday, a penalty. Fernando Torres also. And then the likes of Saul Niguez, who had such a fantastic season last year, wasn't the best day at the office for him with just a 69% past completion. However, let's not be too worried about Atletico Madrid. They've got a fairly soft schedule coming up. They've got the likes of Griezmann to come back into the team. So I think they'll be fine this season. However, on the day, you can't be drawing one all at home against Alaves. So sorry, Diego Simeone, you're our first loser. Our next winner is Welsh wizard Gareth Bale. He scored two goals against Sociedad as Real Madrid ran out 3-0 winners. Bale has now scored or made 24 goals in his last 16 league appearances. These are incredible numbers. Yeah, Gareth really looks to have taken some of that confidence from the Welsh performance at Euro 2016 where he led his side to a semi-final into the start of La Liga. Of course, scoring one of the quickest goals in La Liga history. 1 minute 12 seconds, a fantastic, fantastic header. That's now 10 headers in 2016, the most of any player in Europe's top five leagues. Wow. He is a real, real aerial threat. Of course, the likes of Asensio crossing the ball into him. He's very, very dangerous. And now it's now four in four games against Real Sociedad. So he loves playing against the Anoeta. He just can't stop scoring there as well. He just looks a completely reinvigorated player under Zinedine Zidane. He drifts across that front line. He's almost playing out and out striker at times with Morata moving over to the right. Very exciting times for Madrid. He looks so good under Zidane, doesn't he, Bale? Yeah, Gareth Bale, an absolutely fantastic player. And now with a manager who understands how to get the best out of him. On the other hand, there are issues to be dealt with in the squad, with Casemiro still lacking experienced backup. But Marco Asensio, what a phenomenal young player. We knew he was a talent, but we didn't know he could start contributing this quickly. Another goal after his absolutely phenomenal strike against Sevilla in the Super Cup. So if Zidane can keep everyone fit and keep that team stability that he's been trying to promote, it could be a very interesting season for Los Blancos. Our next losers are Jurgen Klopp's red boys. It's Liverpool, Pato. Yeah, they tumbled to a surprise 2-0 defeat against Burnley. They obviously lost Sadio Mane this week, which did cause problems. However, 
This is a side that had 90% pass completion, 22 key passes. They were really, really dominant. In fact, in this game, they had 80.6% possession. Now, the last time a team had that much possession in a game in the Premier League and went on to lose, it was in 2003, 2004. And to put in context how long ago that is, that's when Arsenal last won the league. Yeah, what was even more shocking for me was, of course, they went to the Emirates and dispatched Arsenal 4-3 last week. So such a contrast to this week was pretty shocking. However, they had 26 shots. It just wouldn't go in the net. And if there was one man to sum up this performance, it was Philippe Coutinho. In fact, if there was one man who could sum up his entire career in a two-week spell, right now it would be Philippe Coutinho. At the Emirates, a magician, fantastic, uh, conducting all of Liverpool's play. Goes to Burnley and the old Coutinho comes back out. Mr. Wasteful, eight shots he had in this game from outside the box. Six of them were off target. Contrast that to last week where he was picking balls between the lines, scored that wonderful free kick. Come to this week, classic Coutinho. Look, we all love him. He's a real magician, but he needs to become more consistent if he wants to get to that top, top level and really break into a team like Barcelona. You never know, it might happen one day. Probably not if you keep shooting from outside the area though. However, hats off to Burnley, a fantastic Fantastic performance, really dug in, a newly promoted side, and Andre Gray gets his first Premier League goal, so well done to you, Andre. However, after the game, you did sour it a bit, didn't you, Pato? Well, it's not all good news. Some tweets have come up of his from about four years ago in which he used some absolutely disgusting homophobic language, so it remains to be seen whether he will be fined or suspended, but given the language in those tweets, it could be either. So I'm afraid it's pretty much a double loser. It's Liverpool and it's Andre Gray. Our final winner of this weekend is the Brazilian magician Neymar. He came home with a gold Olympic medal, didn't he, Joe? Wow, amazing stuff from Neymar. He must be so, so chuffed this morning waking up with that gold medal hanging around his neck. Of course, redemption for the 7-1 hammering at the World Cup, partly anyway, uh, by Germany. When he beats Germany in a final, he scores a free kick and the winning penalty. And he actually scored in the quarterfinal, the semi-final and the final. So Neymar is on one hell of a run. And this kid can cannot stop winning trophies. 19 so far, he, so far, he's aged just 24. Going into the future, he could break all sorts of records. This kid's won the Copa Libertadores, the Champions League, La Liga, the Confederations Cup, the Olympic gold, the Spanish Super Cup. He has won everything. And going forward, he is one hell of a big game player, isn't he, Pato? Yeah, well, he scored in the Copa Libertadores final at 19. He's now scored in the Champions League final and in the Olympic final. It's unbelievable. He's really placing himself in the pantheon of Brazilian greats. Ronaldo and Ronaldinho could only manage bronze at the Olympics in 1996 and 2008, but Neymar now has 46 goals in 70 appearances for the Seles out. That is unbelievable. What a player. What a player. Everybody at home who used to call him a YouTube star, look at him now holding all those medals and I bet you're not saying it anymore. He's going to become one of the true greats of football. Maybe a Ballon d'Or winner? What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Our final losers are Swansea City, who slumped to a miserable 2-0 defeat to Hull. What do you reckon, Pato? Well, Hull have actually had a great start to the season. They've become only the second promoted team in Premier League history to win their first two games of the campaign after Bolton, who did it 15 years ago. That's pretty impressive. Swansea were unbeaten in their last eight Premier League games played in August. Goodbye to that record. Not very impressive. Not very impressive at all. However, Mickey Phelan will be delighted. But in this game, they were completely dominant, Swansea. They really should have made more of it. 23 shots they had with strikers like Fernando Llorente and Borja Baston coming through the door for a combined £20 million. You're expecting them to score you goals. Llorente, of course, has done it at the very top level with Bill Bilbao, with Juventus. Borja Baston comes in as one of Atletico Madrid starlets. So, Borja Baston and Fernando Llorente, it's time you got your scoring boots on. 23 shots is unacceptable. However, I think Swansea will be fine in the long run. Guidolin, once he gets that team to gel together, he has got some exciting young players in there. But another great day for Hull, but a miserable day over in Wales. So those were this week's winners and losers, but who would you have included? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, why don't you check out Football Face Off, where me and Patrick Van Straten go head to head to discuss who we think has been the worst signing of the summer. And as always, guys, please do like and subscribe. Catch you next time.